And now I would like to introduce to you our first speaker, Officer Tracy Gonzalez. Tracy is the Public Information and Social Media Officer for the San Angelo Police Department and has been with the department for nine and a half years. Her responsibilities include handling requests for public information, constructing press releases, crime bulletins, and crime videos. She is the social media as admin for Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Pinterest, and also the administrator for Nixall. And now I'd like to introduce to you Tracy. Tracy, I'm going to give you control right now, and you can begin whenever you're ready. All right. Thank you, Jessica. I appreciate that. Thank you for the introduction. Can everybody see my screen okay? Yep, we can see it. Great. Well, first I wanted to thank everybody for jo joining us today for the webinar and also the Everbridge uh, team for inviting me to participate in today's webinar. I appreciate that. Um, getting started, just talking about Nixle and why my organization decided on choosing Nixle. We were really searching for something that would provide a solution to enable us to disseminate that critical authentic and actionable information to the public. You know, we've researched several companies, there are multiple companies out there, and um, just with everything that Nixle had to offer, it was the perfect fit for my agency and the community's needs. And sharing today some of our success stories, um, we have had, I, I don't know why, I don't know what the, the magic reason is, but this, um, this area, my agency, has had just multiple success stories for missing children and seniors in the area. Um, I can liken that to a good product from, from Nixle. Um, we are a smaller city, about 100,000 people, very connected in West Texas. So we have great buy-in from the community, and that certainly helps. But um, just sharing some of the highlights of our success stories for missing um, endangered children and seniors, we had one that was a pretty big deal for us in 2013. Um, we were called to a, a group living facility, and we had a 17-year-old autistic male who went missing from the facility. And one of the challenges with that incident was that the, the people that um, were in charge of the facility did not notify police immediately. They conducted their own search first throughout the area and really waited until they brought in law enforcement as a resource, which of course on our end just adds to the challenge. Um, but when they did call us in, we, we took appropriate action. We searched the immediate area without luck um, and then very quickly put out the Nixel alert, considering that he was endangered. And what's unique about this story was that um, I'll kind of go into a little more detail about the person that actually located the child. Um, basically, what happened was this, this couple, they were ready for bed, they were in their pajamas and watching TV and they got their Nixle alert on their cell phone and the woman that, that read the alert, uh, she recognized very quickly that this particular missing teenager was a former special education student of hers. So she, she turned to her husband and, and said, get dressed, we, we are going to search for this you know, this person, I know him, and he turned back to her and said, you're crazy, we're never going to find him. But she uh, was adamant and just really compelled to participate in that search. So they responded to the area, they really paid attention to that actionable content within the alert and concentrated on, on the area and um, ended up Walk, you know, noticing him walking down the street, he was confused, um, disoriented a bit, and they in turn contacted law enforcement and uh, waited with him until we could get there. So I think that's a really unique story as far as her being connected to that particular missing person. 
but um, you know, providing that actionable information for her to go to an appropriate area, conduct the search, and really participate in solving this problem. One of our recent success stories was, was interesting as well. We had two sisters, ages 5 and 10. Um, they went missing from a neighborhood that had a, um, a, a school, an elementary school nearby. And again, challenges immediately for law enforcement because the parents did not notify police uh, straight away. They did their own search and after not locating the girls brought us in, um, I think it was more than an hour, maybe an hour and a half after the girls actually went missing. And we, we did the appropriate search. Um, we went door to door engaging neighbors with no luck and um, issued the Nixle alert. And another interesting thing here with this particular case is that um, there was a woman that was driving a couple miles from where the girls initially uh, went missing from. And she was on the phone with her sister. And the sister happened to bring up, hey, did you see the Nixle alert with those two missing girls? And the lady said, no, I don't, you know, I don't get Nixle alerts on my, my cell phone with my carrier, but I follow on, on, you know, online and Facebook and Twitter. And her sister said, well, there's these two little girls, and this is what they look like. This is, you know, she, she went over their descriptors, and um, the lady that was at the intersection said, they're right here. They are right here in front of me. They're at this intersection. She immediately called the police and uh, stayed with the girls until we responded. So why I think that's a, a really interesting case is that even though your you know, citizens might not be a subscriber to the Nixle alert themselves right at that moment for whatever reason, if it's a carrier issue or they're just not savvy to Nixle yet, um, other people are talking about it. And she learned about the alert and and helped us, you know, bring a quick resolution to this incident. And I, I think that's from another recent success story that we had with a, a missing senior uh, was here over the summer. We had this lady who was supposed to drive anymore, didn't have access to car keys. She suffers from dementia. And she somehow got a hold of those keys and was uh, going to the grocery store and went, left her home and was gone for several hours, never returned. And um, her family quickly called us in to start the search. And we issued the alert. And another, another interesting case study for this particular incident was that um, the driver who actually helped us locate her was driving home and didn't actually receive the alert, the missing person alert, on his phone right away. He was driving, didn't check his phone. But what happened was he was going through this intersection and he noticed uh, a car. He noticed this vehicle that was just really hesitating about turning and kind of halfway into the intersection but not, not acting. And the driver noticed the woman, you know, behind the wheel and thought, gosh, she seems disoriented, you know, perhaps she has Alzheimer's or something's wrong, something's just not right. When the man got home, he checked his phone and um, saw the alert in his social media feed and immediately called police. And we were actually sent to the area where he last saw her and we quickly located her. She had just lost her bearings and, and didn't know where she was or how to get home. So again, you know, our, our citizen didn't necessarily receive that alert uh, when it was published or the moment it got published, but acting on that, that good information within the tip, quick resolution to that story. This is something that I stress um, for, for agencies and, and we know from law enforcement from the patrol level up to CID. Amber Alerts can somehow <laughs> really pose a challenge to us when we're dealing with missing children. Um, you know, the circumstances surrounding missing, missing children cases 
So it might not immediately satisfy the state's requirements for amber. That's very frustrating for us because we want to immediately engage the public and get as many eyes and ears you know, on the ground as possible to you know, assist with these searches. So time is precious and we can't afford to wait on, on state approval. Um, with Nixle, this product is great. You can just immediately publish those critical alerts, um, attaching pictures, um, calls to action, and just really begin to engage the community and solicit their help immediately. With Nixel uh, Tip Watch success, again, we've had just multiple success stories with our anonymous Tip Watch um, program. We've solved major cases, we've solved little cases, um, anything from your petty thefts to you know shoplifting, credit card and debit card abuse, burglaries, and then your more serious aggravated offenses, robberies, sexual assaults. Um, Tip watch is interesting. You know, it's different from your um, Crime Stoppers, whereas your agency might not offer monetary rewards. You know, you're soliciting help from citizens, and you're not really offering anything in return except their, you know, building that communication and, and trust, and offering them the ability to help be a part of the solution in the community. And Tip Watch really provides your citizens with the ability to easily and anonymously submit those tips online or through their cell phone. And what's what's great about it is you can solicit them directly through those Nixel alerts that you publish or through press releases, your crime bulletins, um, your YouTube videos that you're putting out or just directly soliciting through social media. Um, what's really important and a key here is to provide the tipping instructions through all forms of your outreach. This is an example of one of our Need to Identify bulletins, and it's a little bit busy, but uh, the reason why we, we started doing it this way is we had a lot of, we were listening to feedback from citizens, and oftentimes we would get these questions from people, well, you know, how do I how do I tip? I don't want to call. You know, a lot of people don't want to, depending on their age group, they don't want to call an 855 or an 800 number uh, for tipping. They only want to text, or they might only want to um, send tips online. So we we created this need to identify bulletin to really walk people through on what we want them to do if they recognize people in these crime bulletins. Um, What's important for us, what we've learned through the years, is branding and then also including as many ways to tip as possible on those bulletins. So everything's static. Um, we just plug the information into the bulletins as they pertain to that incident. And it just, people can save it on their phone and they always have access to all of those multiple ways to share their tips.